Recently, almost all AAA games have been flops. They are boring to play, too expensive, and crammed full of microtransactions. This trend only seems to be getting worse, with publishers like Ubisoft pushing the limits and charging $70 standard for what looks like a mobile edition of Assassin's Creed Black Flag. Seriously, my friend actually said when he first saw the gameplay he thought it was a mobile game. On the other hand, indie developers and smaller studios are killing it. Games like Power World, Enshrouded, and of course Helldivers 2 are breaking records, and it's not some secret formula that is responsible for their success. It's simply a good concept backed by fun gameplay. This video breaks down exactly how Helldivers 2 is making gaming fun again, and hopefully you AAA studios are watching because you guys need this the most. The lore or backstory of Helldivers 2 if you like is brilliant, it doesn't take itself too seriously and recognises that it is just a video game. You get funny little in-game reviews like this one, talking about how he's choosing his gear over his wife, and the huge contract you see in training at the start of the game voids itself immediately, including terms like, to read these terms and conditions in full shall be considered a breach of clause 3.2, where 3.2 states that you should have gotten written permission in advance of reading the contract. The ultra-patriotic, capitalist and freedom-centric civilization of Super Earth is something players can really easily rally behind in a jokey, role-playing way, and it fits in really well with the Michael Bay level explosive usage. I must say, the 500kg bomb is particularly exquisite. The devs then double down on all this with NPC voice lines and propaganda broadcasts. So next time you find yourself unable to run, aim or stay alive, stick yourself with a stamp, soldier! These are touches they easily could have skipped out on, but they put the extra effort in, and it goes a long way for immersion. The Galactic War is genius. All players contribute to higher level objectives, defending or liberating a planet to take control of sectors adds even more to the role-playing aspects. Players' actions have real impact, and coordination on a grand scale affects which enemies and which environments you fight in. In fact, this lore and the Galactic War is so successful that it's practically selling the game by itself on social media, with accounts giving daily updates on the status of the war and selective elite groups forming to tackle the most challenging campaigns. Personally, I'm sick of always playing competitive PvP shooter games. There's a constant pressure to perform, and if you don't, you're going to be dead the whole time, which is the last thing you want when you've come home from work. You might say, well, there are other PvE shooter games, why don't you play those? I challenge you to name one decent game other than Destiny, and personally I don't want to play Destiny because it costs a gazillion pounds to access more than half the game's content. It's refreshing to play a shooting game where sweaty PvP isn't a concern, and the difficulty is scalable as you and your friends see fit. Good teamwork and communication is required to tackle even easier difficulty levels, which adds a really fun angle. In fact, Helldivers 2 is the first game in years that almost all of my friends have picked up to play together, and of course that makes a world of a difference. Speaking of the difficulty system, it's also great in Helldivers 2. In most games, increasing the difficulty will make enemies do more damage and have more health, but in Helldivers 2, stats don't change. Instead, modifiers are applied to each difficulty level, which changes things like spawn rates and which enemies can actually spawn in. This keeps enemies consistent between difficulties and adds unique boss enemy challenges to higher difficulty levels. One of the absolute triumphs of Helldivers 2 is the stratagem system. It adds a unique element to the gameplay and is heavily customizable, to the point where playstyles are shaped around it. The progression system of the game is also tightly coupled with stratagems, with more powerful gear being unlocked as you progress through the levels, giving players an incentive to play. This ties in really well with the game's difficulty system, with the hardest levels being immensely difficult without a well thought out and coordinated stratagem loadout. Missions in Helldivers 2 add yet another element to the gameplay. The devs could have easily made you sit and guard an area for X amount of time, and they do sometimes, but there is so much more variety and interactivity than you would expect. Additional objectives give the option to players to take risks for more reward. They're scattered around the map, which pushes players to explore and interact with the environment. The missions themselves are interesting, like loading up an artillery emplacement with various types of shells, including of course my personal favourite, the mini nuke, and other missions require coordination with your team. For example, telling your teammate which way and how far to turn a valve when only you can see the correct alignment on the terminal. These elements add layers to the gameplay and build on immersion in a really clever way, but the star of the show has to be the extraction. You get a great sense of accomplishment actually tying up the mission and getting you and your squad out alive. The gunplay is satisfying, with some weapons being clearly more powerful than others, but all of them viable. 
I particularly like how the starter rifle is actually a fairly good gun, which means lower levels can still join higher difficulty missions with friends who have better gear and not be entirely defenceless. Core to the gunplay is the need for resource management. Up to four individuals having finite ammo, stims and grenades forces you to play smarter as a squad. One person being out of ammo may be a death sentence, so you need to group up and call a resupply. It's less viable to play as a lone wolf unless you take the resupply pack but then you lose the ability to use some stratagems to their full potential. Just from elaborating a little, you get the idea of the depth even the resupply system brings to the game. And tying it all together, it does make perfect sense that you would need to manage your ammo considering the game's lore and backstory. Yet another thing I was pleasantly surprised with was the ship progression. Doing ship progression through in-game collectibles brings a new dimension to the gameplay. Making sure you manage to extract with all the samples is an entirely different ballgame. Ship upgrades don't only improve stratagems and passive abilities in-game, they also visually change your ship, which is a very rewarding touch. Ship upgrades are also much slower than unlocking stratagems. I personally really like this as these upgrades target your passive capability, which can really impact the game, and extending the time it takes to upgrade creates more of a rewarding payoff when you finally manage to save up enough. Helldivers 2 cost me £35, which is essentially half price compared to AAA games these days. What we all fear when buying a game is the game getting boring or you feel you just can't bring yourself to play it and that's always a big risk but i feel for 35 pounds the risk balances really really well with the cost to the point where i'd actually had no problem buying the game through steam when i would usually go to a third party website like g2a to get a discount this links really well with how arrowhead the game's developers have chosen to monetize the game the battle pass system gives players the option to spend extra cash if they want to, I think it costs about £15 which is very reasonable considering the price of the game, and the battle pass is not shoved in your face at any point. It exists purely as an option for those who want to unlock some different gear. This is exactly how battle passes should be done. The pricing setup of the game invites players in and then allows them to make the decision themselves if they'd like to spend extra cash on the battle pass. Unlike the greedy competition, which loads cost up front and then shoves battle passes and a million other individual skins and currencies in your face as much as possible. The battle pass itself mirrors the gear progression system which allows players to select which items they want in each tier. Again, more player choice, is it just me who's noticing a trend with this game? In AAA titles, we've seen everything from suits telling devs to under-deliver with their games on purpose, from devs shutting down entire subreddits dedicated to feedback and community interaction because of community interaction itself. It's just expected these days that devs will make an announcement once in a blue moon and then go into hiding for months on end when the game is in its worst state, but this is not what we have with Helldivers 2. The CEO of Arrowhead is active on social media, answering community questions with unseen levels of clarity. Take this tweet for example. The guy lets us know to tailor our expectations with the queue as it's hard capped to 500,000 players. As a player who's in the queue waiting, this is great information. I can decide to play something else in the meantime or I'll keep waiting. It puts the ball back in my court as the player and allows me to make a more informed decision. Other community interactions include discussions about the direction of the game. This user asked if customizable armor colors are ever going to be in the game and the CEO responds with, we're discussing it internally. Great, it's not a definite answer, but at least they're letting us know their stance on it. It's nice to think that community feedback is genuinely getting through to the devs. Tying it all together, I would equate this game to an ice cold glass of water at 3am. It's refreshing, crisp and it's hydrating. Hydrating in the way that we're so thirsty for half decent games. Arrowhead remembered what the point of a video game was and delivered big time on the fun front, whilst also taking care of the extra bits, the best I've seen it done in years. Now yes, that's not to say the game is flawless, it has its issues. Server capacity, multiplayer lobbies breaking down, crashes and quite a few other important problems, but I'm more than willing to work with the game considering all the positives. Plus, the clarity of the devs on these issues gives me confidence that they won't be sticking around in the long run. If you haven't already, I'd absolutely recommend picking this game up if it's your type of thing. It's a real shame Xbox guys can't join in, but you'll have to see Sony for that one. So that'll be it from me. I'd like to take a moment to thank you guys for watching, especially if you made it this far in the video. I really appreciate your viewership and it would be awesome if you could consider subscribing if you feel I've earned it. I'm trying to hit a thousand subscribers by the end of the year and it would mean the world to me if I could hit that. Thanks again for watching and I'll catch you next time.